This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University. And today I want to talk about something that's so outrageous. When I read the headlines, I could hardly believe my eyes. I'm calling this the Fed printed money to pay itself. So we all know about U.S. senators and congressmen, how corrupt they are, how they are constantly doing insider trading. This is widely accepted now. It's not just a Democrat thing or a Republican thing. It's basically a lot of these people who are close to inside information and nothing really seems to happen to them. And then on the other side, we have all these fiat personalities, all these billionaires, all these politicians and central bankers who for some reason seem to really, really hate Bitcoin and the amount, the degree of their vitriol and their hatred for Bitcoin is often surprising and it should be sort of a wake up call for people. Why do they hate this so much? So Warren Buffett has talked about Bitcoin being rat poison. Christine Lagarde from the European Central Bank, the ECB, basically uh, paints Bitcoin as mainly just a money laundering uh, device that needs to be uh, shut down because it's engaged in so much funny business. Senator Warren talks about uh, shadowy super coders and makes Bitcoin seem really uh, shady, and, uh, etc. But here's the news story that I wanted to cover. Federal chief, uh, so the chief of the Federal Reserve, uh, Chairman Powell, and other officials actually owned securities that their own central bank was buying during the COVID pandemic. So they own muni bonds, they own various corporate bonds and stocks. And then what happened is the Fed printed up money and just so happened to buy those same things. This is just as, as unbelievable as it gets. I want to really congratulate Steve Leisman and CNBC for, for once doing some, some real research and allowing this to surface. We can scroll down here. We can see that uh, Chairman Powell owned Muni Bonds in a joint account over which he had control. They had initially reported that it was in a family trust and he couldn't do anything about it. But it turns out that all these Fed officials actually owned securities and assets that were being printed, that were being bought by the Fed to prop them up. So Powell owned Muni Bonds, uh, Boston Fed President Eric Rosengren owned uh, REITs that owned mortgage-backed securities. Thomas Barkin owned corporate bonds that were being bought by the Federal Reserve as well. And what's, what's even more crazy is it turns out that these clear ethics violations are not actually ethics violations under the current laws for the Fed. I think they're probably going to change it. It looks like a bunch of these Fed presidents are going to sell their holdings so there's not as much of a, a contract uh, conflict of interest. This is the kind of story that there literally should be mobs outside the Federal Reserve protesting. These are insiders purchasing their own securities using freshly printed up money that dilutes all of us and destroys our purchasing power. This is one reason why the prices of everything have gone up so much in the last 12 to 15 months. It's from all this money printing. Meanwhile, we talk, we've talked about the Cant Cantillon effect, the Cantillon effect in, in economics where those closest to the money printer benefit the most. You can't get a better example, better example of the Cantillon effect than this. And you have to ask yourself, why is Warren Buffett so upset about Bitcoin? Why is Charlie Munger and Elizabeth Warren, they're so upset about this, but they're not upset about Federal Reserve ethics violations of this, of this type. Uh, could it be because Warren Buffett himself has been the recipient of numerous bailouts by the Fed? Of course, he was a major beneficiary of the TARP program back during the 2008 to 2009 financial crisis and, and really going back to the 1990s. Warren Buffett is not your folksy grandfather just sipping his Coke on the porch. He's a consummate Wall Street insider uh, and has been uh, friends with many very powerful people, including journalists, for the past uh, 200 years, however, however old he is. So don't be fooled by these people. And when they go after Bitcoin so hard, you have to understand why they are doing it. If you're finding this video helpful so far, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button and share this video with a few friends who may not know what is going on. So in a sequence, in, a, in the following sequence of events, of course, the Fed is going to do an ethics review of themselves. There's, there's no one above them. There's no one external. So Powell ordered staff uh, 
inside the Fed to do an ethics review. So this is the Fed not only printing up its own money to buy securities that Fed officials own, but then the Fed itself gets to do its own uh, ethics review of itself. If you don't think this is the craziest thing you've ever seen, I really don't know what to tell you. Most of America is asleep. There's a quiet revolution happening that the people don't realize what's happening. We're moving towards social credit scores and a more China-like system. Meanwhile, the central bankers control everything. And there's, there's, there can't be a better example of it than this. This is, this is what the, the Fed officials are doing when they're talking about their own uh, reviewing themselves for ethics. There'll be a slap on the wrist. Uh, nothing will really happen. And meanwhile, they continue to do what they do. This is one reason I'm so passionate about Bitcoin. Bitcoin fixes issues like this. If we move to Bitcoin as a global reserve asset, things like this will go away because there'll be no money printer that anyone can game. Bitcoin's monetary policy, the rate at which new Bitcoin are issued, for example, now it's 6.25 Bitcoin, every new block that's mined, and that will be halved in uh, about three years from now, a little less than three years from now. This monetary policy is set in stone. No one is close to the money printer. No one can game it. We know what the issuance rate will be. It's set in stone for the next thousand years. This issuance rate will not be changed either. It's one of the fundamental ideologies of Bitcoiners, the 21 million cap, the halvings, the difficulty adjustments. These are things that are not going to be changed. Meanwhile, the Fed, we have the money printers in charge. It's much different. There's no, there's no one at the helm of the money printer with Bitcoin. Satoshi disappeared many years ago. He's never moved or sold his Bitcoin. He's not like Vitalik Buterin dumping 25% of his Ethereum on retail traders. He's not like the Fed printing up. uh, Satoshi's not like the Fed printing up his own money to bail himself out. Satoshi is worth tens of billions of dollars now and has never sold any of it. Now, I often get this comment, uh, especially from altcoiners in my uh, YouTube comment section, Matt's just pumping his Bitcoin bags or he's a maxi shell, th- this sort of thing. And I just want to reiterate this for new viewers who might not have heard my response to this. First of all, I'm already wealthy. I'm a retired hedge fund manager. And this is one reason I understand how this how the system works. So I don't, I don't need the money from Bitcoin. It really is the frosting on the cake at this point. I'm here for the Bitcoin revolution. And I'm here to help you participate in it as well because it's a huge profit opportunity for everyone. The current price of Bitcoin, whether it's $40,000 or $50,000, is just rounding error. I believe we're going to $1 million, $2 million, $5 million, $10 million, $20 million Bitcoin. So I want to help you participate in this and I want you to understand the reasons behind it. I don't want you to blindly follow me into this, but I want you to do your own research to understand the current system and then to understand the alternative that a Bitcoin standard could offer. Also, not pumping my bags, I'm never gonna sell Bitcoin. I may borrow against it once it gets above a million dollars per coin, but I'm never going to sell it. You never sell your Malibu beach house, you never sell your Picasso, uh, you never sell your Raffaello or Leonardo da Vinci painting. These are scarce objects and Bitcoin is the first and only example of digital scarcity. So I'm not pumping because I'm never going uh, to sell. The real reason I'm interested in Bitcoin, apart from the profit opportunity, is I don't want my children and my grandchildren to live in a world run by central bankers and other central planners. These people who can print up their own money to bail themselves out and pay themselves. And this is the great irony when people use this critique against me, against Bitcoin maximalists, saying that I'm just pumping my bags. The ironic thing is I've added it up. I could easily make an extra million dollars a year getting paid to pump altcoins like a vast majority of other YouTubers, YouTubers that you see out there. Every single day I get emails offering me money to promote new cryptos, new tokens, new protocols, new projects. I'll share just one of them here. This is, these are scumbags. Don't don't go to Point Network. Basically they pretend they're building Web 3.0 and they want me to be their first crypto influencer. And in, in exchange for that, they sent me this thing, uh, the influencer deck. And this is, you have to understand YouTubers who are promoting tokens besides YouTube. Here is the, uh, the, uh, the key paragraph. You would have the opportunity to receive tokens before our ICO launch. 
So this is what a lot of YouTubers do and a lot of people who are not Bitcoin maximalists. They get paid, I could get paid a bunch of tokens here and then I could dump them. I could make a video and then dump them on all, on all of you while you were buying it. This is how the vast majority of these programs uh, operate. And a lot of people are just very naive uh, about this. And this is the ironic thing about criticizing Bitcoin maximalists because for Bitcoin, there's no center there. No one ever contacts me to pump Bitcoin. And do you know why? There's no CEO, there's no headquarters, there's no legal team, there's no marketing team sending out emails to social media influencers. Bitcoin really is decentralized. It doesn't have a marketing budget like Ethereum or Cardano or the Point Network. So the next time you see a YouTuber pumping something besides Bitcoin, know that it's quite likely that something like this is going on behind the scenes. Like I said, I get many, many emails like this a day. I could make, uh, I could make a video for these guys and they probably pay me like $10,000, $20,000 just for one or two videos. So there's huge money involved. There's a huge temptation and so far I've been able to resist it. Uh, if I ever do start making videos about other cryptocurrencies or tokens, you should call me out and ask me if I'm being paid. It's highly unlikely. I really am a, uh, a toxic Bitcoiner maximalist and I accept, I accept the title because I'm in this for the revolution that's coming that will move us to a Bitcoin standard. Finally, I wanted to end with this tweet from Wealth Theory, which I thought was spot on. The fact that billions of working men and women must sacrifice 40 plus years of their time, energy, health, and focus to gain access to fiat currencies like the euro and the dollar, that central banks can replicate with a keystroke is injustice on the largest scale humanity has ever seen. It is theft. And I think this is true. And the clearest example of it that we've seen to date is the Fed printing up money to buy the very same securities that Fed officials own. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.